Tom. Thank you. Uh, first off, congratulations to LSU and to Florida, um, two great baseball teams who are going to um, play this weekend for a national championship. And they, uh, they both earned earn their way there. So <clears throat> kudos to that club. So proud of our guys, um, not only for the way we battled today, and, and, but for really all season, our consistency and our toughness all season. And you heard me say this time and time again this week, but the, but the way these guys love each other, um, you know, as a coach, you know, I, I'd rather coach this team and, and not win the national championship than coach any other team. And uh, I'm just beyond proud of them. And uh, Rhett today, what can you say about Rhett Ladder today? I mean, Paul Skeens was fantastic, and Rhett matched him pitch for pitch. Uh, it was one of the best pitch college baseball games I've ever seen. And, um, you know, Michael Massey and behind him was, was dominant, and, and Hurd was too for LSU. So runs were hard to come by, and, and um, you know, unfortunately we couldn't find a way to scratch one across there those first 10 or so innings. But, um, again, proud of this club. Brock Wilk in the season he put together you know, to be the ACC home run leader for, for a career in three years and, um, and to become the defensive player he's become and, and the athlete he's become, but also the teammate he's become. So just proud of these two guys on my left. I can't wait to watch them play, you know, for the next 15 years, um, you know, on my television. So proud of this team, proud to be a small part of it. Our coaching staff, I want to thank those guys for everything they poured into our season. And... Um, Honored to be a small part of it. Okay, we'll open it up for questions for the student athletes. We'll start with the birthday boy, Essex. Essex there, blogger so dear. Um, this goes for both Brock and Rhett. You guys stayed on the field for a long time, embracing as a team. What were the kind of things that were said during that time, and what did it feel like during that moment? Yeah. Uh, Brock. Yeah, it was a, it was a tough, tough one there. Um, you know, we kind of – just embrace each other and, and reiterated how much we love one another. And, um, you know, this is the last time a lot of us will get to put on this jersey. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I got to do it with the two guys to my right and all 30 guys in the dugout. Um, those are my best friends. And I got to go to war with those guys every single day. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky and proud to say I played Wake for, for Wake Forest baseball. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Brock covered a lot of it. Um, just kind of telling each other how much we love each other, that we've showed it all year, but kind of just expressing it to one another. Um, we've come from so far. A lot of the guys um, were here a couple of years ago, and we, and we kind of – it's a lot of hard work that went into that. So we were kind of just embracing each other and, and taking in the moment. So. Okay, right here. Question. Connor O'Neill, Deacon Illustrated. Rhett, went into – what went into you being able to pitch on so short rest and then being able to pitch 88 and – as effectively as you did, um, I don't really know what went into it. Uh, I, I don't. I'm, I'm grateful just to be be able to put this jersey on. So whatever I can do, whenever I can pitch, I'm going to pitch. Um, this might be the last time. It's going to be hard for me to take this off tonight, but um, there's no way I, I, I wouldn't pitch in this game. Aaron. Uh, Aaron Fit, do you want baseball rep? Just to almost piggyback on that. I mean, there was so much anticipation toward this matchup, you and Skeens and, you know, the two teams that have been number one all year long and, you know, everything else, trip to the finals on the line. To be part of that, that kind of the, the historical game, really, um, when you exited the game, did it kind of hit you, the, the magnitude of the whole thing? And, and how do you kind of just describe the, the experience of, of this game? Yeah, I mean, this is probably the best game I've ever played in. Um, wish we could have came out on the other side, but, you know, credit to LSU. Like they said, they're a really good team. Um, Paul Skeen is a really good pitcher. He um, He's a very impressive to watch. Um, but, you know, I, it hit me a little bit. But, you know, every game at this park in front of these fans is just – it's unreal. Okay, Mike. Michael Farrow with Burke Sports Network. Rhett, um, you made uh, history tonight breaking the Wake Forest single season strikeout record. From all the guys who played before you, what's it like to be a part of that historical record? Yeah, I mean – Josh Hartle broke it last time he was out there. I wish he got a, another chance to pitch and he would have just broke it again. But um, I'm super proud of him, and, and it's an honor to be listed with all those guys before me. But I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for Josh and, and what his uh, career is going to look like. Okay, here in the back. Danny Wexelman, ESPN. A lot of people seeing you guys on this stage. For everyone who's in here, they watch you all season, but 
Um, what do you guys hope that people learned about your team and, and what you guys already know about each other? Um, yeah, I, th I think it goes a lot to say for um, how much how much love and, and care for each other that we have. That goes a lot longer than any any talent um, will ever, you know, take anyone. So uh, when people watch us, you know, we're, we're never out of any single game. And um, how much energy and how much fun that we bring to the table every single day. Um, you know, I, I hope that I can leave that lasting legacy on on other people and my teammates. That how much energy and passion and and fun that I bring to this game. And um, you know, I left it all on the field tonight, and um, I wouldn't have done it with anyone else. Yeah, I think what we did a good job of, and what um, a lot of people might not know, is just how much fight we actually had. Um, you know, I feel like that people say we play in a small bar ballpark and just hit home runs all the time, but but just finding ways to win is what we've done all year long in, in close games, and, and it takes a lot of grit and it takes a lot of fight, and we've done it in numerous different ways. But you know, I think that's just something that that we should. Big man. Matt Talry from World Baseball Network. Rhett, what is it like to have a guy like Bennett Lee behind the dish uh, through all your starting appearances this season? Bennett Lee's amazing. I mean, just the addition to him to this team. I mean, he controls the pitching staff. He he just brings the energy. And, and then some guy you trust uh, like to talk to in any sort of situation, and, and then you know he's going to show up every single day. And um, big thing for a catcher, he doesn't. he's super – um, level-headed, so he could have a tough day at the dish, and you'd have no idea. You would have no idea if you're pitching to a guy that's over three. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things um, for being a catcher. It's it's awesome. Les, this will be our last question for the student athletes. And the last challenge, Demon Deacon Digest, for both you guys. You know, 54 wins. Uh, you fall one game short of the College World Series finals. What do you think is the legacy of this team and Team 109? Rhett, start, please. Yeah, I think I think this just the evolution of Wake Forest baseball to get to where we are now. It's it's something very, to like to be proud of. Um, I'm super grateful, like I said earlier, just to be able to put the jersey on, um, and then to be a part of what we've built. And you know, this is like this is the standard for Wake Forest baseball now. So I'm um, just excited for to see when they get back. Brock. Yeah, as as Red said, uh, Team 109 blended the future and the past together. Um, you know, this is now the standard, and we exceeded a lot of our expectations and, and the world's expectations. So to be able to go out there and, and play every day and, um, you know, leave a, leave a lasting legacy that people will always look up to, that, that means more than any personal accolade will ever mean. Guys, thank you. Thank you for the year. Thank you for tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Okay, we'll start with questions here, and I see Aaron first. Aaron, 51. Um, we've talked so much about Rhett over the years, of course, but you know this performance today on this stage and, and his kind of overall legacy, how do you put both of those things in, into context? Well, it's impossible. I mean, you know, the guy went 30-5 and five in his career, and, and uh, this is the first game we've lost this year that he's, that he's pitched in. So obviously wouldn't be here without him and uh, just a total gamer. I mean, he was just out there competing and battling, uh, matching, again, matching Paul Skeen's pitch for pitch. So, <clears throat> again, and, and the, the, the most amazing thing is he's an even better kid than he is pitcher. Um, you know, he's just the kind of guy that you want to go to war with. And everybody on his team just has so much respect for him and love for him. So, you know, he's the epitome of what you want in a college baseball player. Okay, Conrad. Connor O'Neill, Deacons Illustrated. Tom, can you walk me through the decision process to go to Manasi there? And then I think you'd walk Tommy in his previous at bat or two of bats to go. Was there any thought of that? Uh, I know it's harsh to second guess it now, but your thought process. Yeah, again, we were in between on whether to start Manasi in that inning, truthfully. And, you know, I always, I always hate to be that guy that, <clears throat> you know, if you're going to. If you're going to go to somebody after one base run, after the first guy gets on, it's like, why didn't you just start the other guy? And, I, and I'm always in between on that. But, you know, again, if, if we were going to lose this game, I wanted Cam up on the mound. You know, he's our guy, and, and he's made pitches. And, you know, obviously, would like to have that one back. But, you know, if you're going to lose a ball game, I want him to be the guy on the mound and give credit to Tommy White and put a good swing on the ball. Okay, man. 
Fatty Ruiz, White and Blue Review. I'm, I'm sorry that you're on the sour end of this, but I just, I'm wondering, it didn't feel like there were many mistakes by either team tonight. It just felt like someone took the moment and won it. What was it like to be a part of a game of that magnitude on this stage with so much at stake where the players played to the level? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the expectations coming into this game with that matchup were, were off the charts and both teams delivered on that. And that's that's near impossible to do. I mean, I, you know, I mean, we were like through seven innings and Paul Skeens hadn't walked anybody yet. And I was just like blown away by, um, you know, again, obviously it's got great stuff. But I just I was just so impressed with his ability to make pitches. And, uh, you know, there weren't even really that many three ball counts. And. You know, our goal, our game plan coming into it was to drive his pitch count up, and we just weren't able to do that because he just threw so many strikes. But, you know, and again, we delivered on the other side of that. You're right, there weren't any mistakes. I mean, again, we made one bad pitch, and Tommy White didn't miss it. We hit some hard balls, you know, off a of herd. I mean, we barreled up probably six balls off herd that was kind of right at people, and, you know, we, we didn't get the big hit. They did. Okay, Les. Coach, uh, uh, how, how deflating was it for the team initially to see Nick Kurtz pulled from the lineup? And then how happy were you with, with what Jack did out there tonight? Yeah, really impressed with Jack. You know, we put him in the lineup at Louisville, and, and I was proud of him then too because he just looked like he belonged. He didn't miss a beat. And, you know, he went in there today, got our first hit, obviously, and, you know, had some other good at-bats, took some good swings, played well defensively. So, you know. We were trying to find a situation to get Curtsy in there. We just, you know, Curtsy said he had one at bat in him. Um, and we were just trying to get a guy in scoring position um, for him. And, you know, the only really time we got a guy in scoring position, it was Lucas Costello and, and Brock Wilkin up. So um, obviously we weren't going to hit for those guys. But again, um, you know, I, 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 I have to think if we had had a healthy Nick Kurtz this week, I mean, you know, the stuff that happened today was kind of just a holdover from the Alabama you know, super truthfully, and he's been he's been battling all week. And if we have a healthy Nick Kurtz, then who knows? Maybe yesterday's different too. Yes, six. Coach in the huddle on the field. What was your message to the team, but also personally? What I mean, what were the emotions going through your mind? Post game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just told those guys I was proud of them, and I loved them, and wouldn't want to be here with any other group of guys, and. Hold their heads high, enjoy the moment, soak it in, and uh, just be present in the moment. Take it all in. Wake Forest will be back in this game again. And uh, I know we'll be with all these guys on this team because we've got several guys that are going to be high draft picks, but and we've got a couple seniors too. So I'm sorry they won't be back in this game, but I know, I know Wake Forest will be. Okay. Back here in the middle. Zach Ewing from The Advocate. Tom, um, probably the key moment of the first 10 innings, the squeeze play. Um, walk us through that decision and then what you saw on it. Kind of like he said, it didn't seem like anyone did anything wrong. They just made a play on you. Yeah, it was bunted maybe just a little too hard, but I thought it was a pretty good bunt. And, and give credit to Trey Morgan. He was kind of straight vacating on that ball. And, um, you know, the, the, the reality of the situation is, is you know, <clears throat> you could maybe hold the runner there because I don't think they'd have been able to get an out on the backside of that because of the way he crashed and, I don't know that they had anybody covering first base. So um, I think if we make a little better slide there, we're probably safe. You know, I think we just got a little too high with the slide. But again, it was, it was a great defensive play by a great defensive first baseman. And, you know, I think both teams did everything right. Okay, this will be our last question for Tom. Yeah, Aaron Fitt again. Uh, Coach, kind of the other part of that inning, the eighth, I mean, there's, you know, Kind of the, the peak of that game in a lot of ways was the top and then the, the bottom of that inning. But uh, you got a guy at second base, Cruz, coming up. Uh, you decided to pitch to him with Massey, and then you walk white and, and you pitch to Morgan. And the way that all worked out for you was, was really good. But I'm just really curious if you could explain kind of the strategy there because I thought that was compelling. Yeah, you know, anytime you consider walking somebody, you, you know, you're looking at it and saying, okay, we've got to pitch to two out of the three guys. And which of the, which, you know, had to pitch to two of them. You couldn't, you couldn't pitch to one of them. So, um, you know, we just chose Cruz and, and Morgan in that situation. You know, we felt like Massey, uh, with his ride on his fastball, was a good was a good matchup for Cruz. And um, you know, and again, and, and you know, Tommy White, the key to getting him out is to, is to be out of the zone. And uh, you know, that's what the, the plan was there in the last inning. And you know, we just missed center cut. And when you miss center cut on Tommy White, he's going to punish you. Tom, thank you. Congratulations thank you. on the year. Thank you. Appreciate your hospitality.